Cheers up, oncoming queen. Cheer up, sleepy. We're actually trying to find leopard right now. We came on the car to these pans off Shibamu Road, and as we came off the road, Viam said, stop leopard tracks. So Herbert said, no, they're old tracks. So Viam said, no, they're not, Herbert. So we got off the car and we looked, and indeed they are not old. The actual leopard. The leopard is here. Oh my goodness. It's Shongila's tracks. And presumably Shongila herself. Okay. Oh Oh, there she is. <laughs> Hold on, build the beast. And she just doesn't pay any attention to us whatsoever. Oh, this is just too wonderful. Hello, my dear. How are you? I have missed you greatly. Greatly. We have so much to talk about. I missed your mother. I want to know how your brother's doing. I had, sorry, I had no idea that Herbert actually had found her. He, he did his good, the bad and the ugly whistle. And I thought that meant that he'd found the tracks. So we came through here, and there she is. And there's a lovely shot of her from here, if you, if you want it. Now, if you are a new viewer, what we have experiencing here is not something that happens every day. We are sitting with a leopard who is now probably 15 meters from us. She is completely and absolutely relaxed with our presence on foot. That's not common. Yes, it does happen, and from time to time leopards, especially if they're raised around human beings, in other words, so not domesticated or in captivity, but raised around human beings, they stop seeing us as a threat. Now she's moving off. Something has bugged her. I'm not sure what it is. She might be about to stalk something. I think she's stalking something. She could be trying to move out of the way of us. But she's so relaxed around human beings, it is quite astonishing. I mean, she's viewed us on foot from when she was a very tiny baby. And so she's just very, very relaxed. I'm not sure why she disappeared there. I'm just going to look. There were some buffalo around here. Just going, have you got her there? I'm just going to look in the background to see if she hasn't spotted something coming this way. Now, a sighting like this, of course, is not to be taken for granted. You know, she, she's not looking anywhere near us. She's looking down through the way here. Maybe her brother's around? What can you see? Sweet, sweet girl. <laughs> ah, well. And just to give you an idea of how relaxed she is, Herbert, once I didn't respond to the whistle quickly enough, he actually just shouted. He said, come, I've got her. And she didn't, she just didn't react. What do you think, Herb? She's very relaxed, but she's just looking for something. Well, Rebecca Smith, you say she's desperate for company. I don't know that she's desperate for company. I think every leopard eventually becomes a little bit like me. And that means that, um, well, you're just very happy to be on your own most of the time. And that's exactly what they do. They like the company of their mothers and their brothers when they're little. And then they get a little bit older. And they start to be much less comfortable being around uh, their siblings and their parents. 
and just move very slowly from people. And I think, I, I wonder whether that will be the situation with us. Will she eventually decide that we aren't very pleasant to be around in much the same way that hyenas do. We know, of course, that hyenas love, as babies, love to be around the vehicles, chewing the vehicles. They come right up, they'll put their noses on them. As soon as they hit puberty, however, they become much more reticent and you won't get within sort of ooh, five or six meters of them before they'll move off. And I hope she doesn't do that. Tristan shares the story of Salayesha, who we've never seen, I don't think, uh, and she lives at Simbambili. And Salayesha apparently gave birth to cubs underneath one of the rooms at Simbambili. And even then, had no reaction to people. She'd suckle them in front of people on foot, walking past her in the camp. Oh, and I believe you have, we have seen Salayesha twice. Once with Sam and once with Brett, Brent. I don't know what she's looking at over there, but it's not us. She spotted something in the grass there. And the other thing about a sighting like this is that it's not to be taken lightly in that you don't want to break this trust because this trust could be very easily broken by a false move, by a fast move, by not reading her body language correctly, by, I mean, it's a very tenuous tenuous link that's going on here and it's a tenuous relationship and will probably remain tenuous for the rest of its existence in that one thing that we do that frightens her will break the spell that exists between her and us but right, we are now going to head across to her first cousin